Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, we're here at the head office of the Royal Cargo and we're very fortunate to be interviewing the Chairman and Group CEO of the Royal Cargo, Mr. Michael Kurt Royper. Hi, Michael. Good morning. Good morning. Pleased to meet you and finally we see each other again after the October Fest. <laughs> I hope that the next one will happen. Yes. Next year. Next year, yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for granting us this interview. You know, uh, Royal Cargo is one of the biggest uh, logistics company here in the Philippines, and you've been here. It's been more than four decades. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can you tell us more about your business and how? Why? Why did you start this kind of business? Well, why did I come to the Philippines? Uh, I was very young when I arrived in the Philippines. Uh, I must have been 17 years old at that time, okay? Um, I met my wife when I was 18 and I married her when I was 19. And when I was 20 years old, uh, in the meantime we were a bit more than a year in Germany. My wife is Filipina, she's from Pak San Hang. And uh, then after a bit more than one year we returned to the Philippines and I started uh, a logistics company. At that time it was called Forwarding Company. Yeah, for Why did I do that? Because it was a German Hamburg based forwarding company which gave me the opportunity to be their representative in the Philippines. And you see, uh, we have to thank our women because uh, if not for her, probably they would not have given me the job. <laughs> because she, uh, she as a Filipina and me as a young German, uh, aggressive already during that time, they thought it may be a good idea to send us over here. They had no presence here in the Philippines during that time. So for three years, we, uh, uh, I was the head of a representative office of a German logistics company. And then we formed a joint venture company. So uh, uh, at the age of 23, I was uh, boss of a Philippine-German logistics uh, joint venture company. And uh, that was then in uh, 1978. Wow. the start of uh, Royal Cargo, actually. Wow. So you have a very rich uh, historical background and as young entrepreneur, you are really adventurous. Uh, why Philippines? Well, <clears throat> I had the choice at that time when the, when the, when the question came up, uh, how do I get back to, uh, to Asia? because I like Asia for a variety of reasons. I don't want to go in details. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so <clears throat> I had the choice in 1975 uh, for a job in Vietnam and in the Philippines. So my wife being Filipina, right? And also uh, for the reason that there was a war in Vietnam, of course I decided happily for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. right? That is, uh, and as a young guy, uh, you know, looking for a uh, future and adventure, and uh, opportunity. It was a big opportunity for me to start uh, a life with my new wife here in the Philippines for me and company. Wow, that, that's very fantastic to hear uh, because having been educated by Germans, I know the work ethic of Germans and uh, the, the precision and all those interesting things that I admire by the world. Uh, Hearing this, you know, makes me really inspired, uh, Mike. Um, logistics company is a very challenging business because you, you told us that you've been here for 45 years. What was your experience as and how did you handle like, uh, 1997 we have the Asian financial crisis, then in 2008 we have the global financial crisis, then in 2014, we have this problem in the port congestion. How did you handle this perfectly? Well, time was of the essence because you said uh, 45, actually 47 years uh, I'm here. Um, no, actually long, long. No, 47 years. I'm also 47 years married to the same woman. Wow. So uh, how did we handle that? Uh, well, like in any company, you have your ups and downs, and you have your challenges. And if you meet the challenges and survive the challenges, then you have the opportunity to grow again. Uh, somehow we were able to adjust. I think it's very important to adjust. 
And also what we have learned in the course uh, of uh, building up our business is to differentiate, uh, to be different from others, to do more or to uh, do it different in a different way, or to invent new services, and that is what we have been doing. So traditional freight forwarding is just uh, transporting air freight or ocean freight from A to B or truck it from here to there. Right? Uh, in the meantime, we have developed a lot, a lot of niche business, businesses and in some areas we are either one of the or maybe even the market leader. Where we are the market leader in the Philippines right now is project and heavy lift business. So anything related to heavy transportation or ultra heavy transportation and location and erection I think there it's a bit difficult to uh, get around us, let's uh, say it that way. But uh, Project the Heavy Lift is only one aspect of what we are doing. We are also in other niche businesses like uh, liquid transportation. So we are the company probably with the biggest fleet of ISO tanks, wow. of uh, liquid uh, tanks for domestic operation as well as uh, international. So practically I could say it's from erection to Resurrection. Yes. That's good. <laughs> From erection to resurrection and uh, survival. Yeah. Because you were asking how did we survive? Well, in the first place we were not, we, I had nothing to lose when I started because I started with nothing. So uh, we had to build it up uh, by and by. And sometimes there were challenges and growth was slow or was stagnant. We just had to survive until the next phase of growth came up. So we were able to do that and uh, grow with the next phase. So that is what we did. But again, I want to emphasize really on the issue of uh, differentiation and uh, why we are different, because we are different. So one is project and heavy lift, the other one is liquids, the third one is uh, cold storage. You mentioned yes. that you have seen, sometimes you are yes. passing our cold store it's on the way huge. to the south. Yes. It's uh, the second biggest we have. The biggest we have is in Plare del Bolacan with a rated capacity of about uh, 15,000 uh, pallet positions on a, almost seven hectare land in Florida. Uh, it's a huge facility, that is the biggest one. And then we have another one which we are operating since almost 15 years for uh, friends of ours. They own that facility in, in Cavite, while the one you saw and the one in Florida is owned by, uh, by Royal Cargo. So we are in, uh, in Cold Store as well. But it's not only cold storage. We differentiate also in the sense that we do cold chain. Yes. And now talking about cold chain and talking about what is going on right now is also, I think, very noteworthy that we are one of the companies with accreditations in pharma logistics. Wow. So, uh, and I can show you later, before you leave, I will show you a vaccine depot. Wow. And I will show you, and maybe you can make a picture of a minus 80 degrees uh, cold store yes, facility yes. and for others it's minus 20 and for others it's only from 5 to 8. So it depends on what kind of vaccine we are talking about. But we are accredited, we have the uh, facilities, uh, we are not the market leader there, there are others which are much bigger than, than us but uh, we believe that we can also uh, help and contribute to, uh, to the present uh, challenges to get uh, Filipinos uh, vaccinated. The right now, the, the pandemic has really you know, created a havoc in the economy. That's correct. Uh, globally and even here in the Philippines, because I know that those who would not be able to adapt in handling their logistic uh, implementation uh, will not will will perish. And uh, for Royal Cargo, what are in the pipeline and what are the changes that you have done in order to? be able to adapt to the now normal and be able to move forward. Let me start with uh, saying the, new, uh, the now normal is not normal. Yes. Because uh, it's, very, <laughs> it's, very, it's very abnormal uh, because the challenges we have right now on the logistic side is a dramatic increase in cost. Yes. Yeah, if you look now how much uh, the air freight rates are, uh, not only to and from the Philippines, but uh, in Asia and maybe around the world. I just have knowledge about Asia to and from. But uh, I can see tremendous increases in, uh, in cost, which will be a challenge going forward. And it's not only uh, the tremendous increase in cost, it's the reason for the increase in cost, which is the problem. 
and that is you have uh, delayed uh, uh, requirements, right? Because during the during the uh, pandemic, uh, people saved money, or they are forced to save money because they could not travel anymore. Yes. Yeah, they could not travel anymore, and to some degree, they could not shop anymore. So money pent up, and apparently nobody was taking that into consideration. And now that money is suddenly spent, mm -hmm. and it is spent on something which is transportable. Yeah. So now the air, the shipping lines are running out of uh, out of containers, That's right. and the airlines uh, have run out of space because some of them defaulted already; they are not even uh, there anymore. So that will be the next uh, the next challenge. But for us, problems are always opportunities also, and uh, typically we are investing at times when things are difficult. Yeah. Not when times in boom times to invest, you know, then you may probably overspend.